you're just walking on this path here. I mean, if you can see the path, because it's almost invisible. It's right there. So I might not be able to film this as good, because I'm scared shitless, to be honest. <laughs> Today, we have a packed video with almost everything you can find in Alpstein, in Appenzell. This is the most complete and all-around alpine experience in a very condensed area that I think you can find in Switzerland. And I've added it all to one video with chapters so that you can pick and watch where you're gonna go next. My name is Frederick, and these are my adventures. We woke up early to get to Alpstein, or Appenzell, as most people probably know it. Given I had a packed agenda today, I had to come early to be able to show you the whole area, in case you want to go here in the future. So we just made it to the top of the Hohekasten. I always have issues pronouncing these words. Anyway, so we're here on roughly 1800 meters, and behind us, over here, we have Vaduz, we have Liechtenstein, over there we have Austria. If you look here, you have the whole lake, Lake Constance, and then on the other side there you have the whole of Germany. You also have restaurants with a view over the whole of Vaduz and Liechtenstein, but we're going in here. Today I will cover the parts which I recommend first, and where most of you are probably going to go. And if the weather allows, I will go to the more risky area towards Sentis, just to show you what you can expect up there. This map shows how I will walk. And I might go all the way up to Ebenalp as well, but that's a bit more dependent on the weather actually. We're gonna start, we go the whole the whole mountain ridge here on the left side and then we're gonna pass down cross over the next mountain line mountain range they have here in the middle to walk over to the other side there are plenty of good views from up here so before you leave this place just take a stroll around and with that lake in the middle there you will get amazing photos and then it was time to start walking. Today we have 25 kilometers with 1,500 meters of ascent and descent to cover. If I would recommend a place here in Switzerland for your first hike, this would be the first place to go to. It's generally safe and you have huts everywhere with food and drinks and they also have bathrooms. It's also very easy to get in and out by car or public transport. This morning's hike is a geological trail which crosses this part of up in Sederland. And along the way here, you're gonna see 20 of these boards explaining everything that happened here. Unfortunately, most of it's in German, but I would say with today's technology, such as Google Translate, it shouldn't be too hard to just translate these. So along this way, and you can actually see it here in front of me, over there you have layers of old atmospheres you have old drainage lakes you will see different weather patterns across different times so it's actually pretty fascinating see here in the front we're entering the first or second hitta so this hitta also have, has a cable car which you can take all the way up here You'll have a restaurant, you'll have, you know, a place to stay. But today I brought my own coffee, because it cost about five Swiss francs to buy in each of these huts. And it actually adds up. If you add all the meals, drinks, and the stayover, you can easily spend a fortune here. For those who are a bit afraid of hiking the path that we just did, because there are a few high, high areas and a bit more sketchy places if you've never done this before. There's a route, as you can see down there, 
So this route here goes all the way into the lake. So if you want to, you can just take this little easy route. You're gonna pass some farms. You're gonna pass a lot of cows, goats, etc. Place you can have some cheese, something to eat. There are plenty of, of um, hittas down there as well. It's not only up here that they have hittas, they have them down there as well. You're still gonna be able to get all the way in and have these amazing views in the background. You're just gonna see them from the bottom while we're gonna see them here, both from, from up here where we are and then down below a bit later. On the other side there, you see where we're gonna pass in a bit. So that's after, there's so many flies. After we have gone, I'll show you that as well. I'll have lunch, I'll take a swim in the little lake. Beautiful lake, I've been there before. And once we're done with that, we're gonna cross the mountain again. Once I got down, I noticed that I wasn't the only crazy person taking a swim. But honestly, it looks so tempting, so why wouldn't you have jumped in? <laughs> the funny thing here is that once I was in, I actually thought to myself, Oh, I'm staying in here relaxing for such a long time before panicking and swimming back. But apparently, that was not the case. But on a hot day like this, when your body gets very warm and your feet swells, an ice cold bath, even if it's uncomfortable, really helps to relax and you feel so refreshed afterwards. And then it was time for lunch. This lunch and one drink cost 30 Swiss francs. You can also easily get the daily soup in all these places and that will get you a bit cheaper off. After lunch, I was actually fortunate to come across this guy and it's rather nice to have some traditional music in the background. What we're doing now is we're gonna, as I said, cross to the other side. And it's a good view here right behind me because you can see it's just a wall. <laughs> it basically goes straight up. Not many other people do this part here in the middle because they tend to just go in and out of one valley. But who can blame them because there's actually no real benefit from doing this unless you're here for more than one day. Okay, I'm destroyed. So I'm at the same height as where we started going down the other side. You can hear I'm, I'm tired of my voice. On the other side here, you'll see the whole mountain ridge, which we were walking on all the way there where you see the gap. And from there, we walk down the valley, down to the house on the lake, up again on the other side here, down and then all the way up here. Now we're gonna get up there. And I think in the afternoon, worse weather is going to come in. So it's going to be thunderstorms at six-ish, as I've understood. So let's hurry. So now we're in between the two mountains or two areas, I guess. So you have three kind of mountain ridges going in and then you have two valleys going in a bit simplified so we started on the one on the left here and now we're crossing the middle one and we're going to go over to the right one and up the right one that's where we have Meglis Alp where i'm going to stay today so what you see down here that's actually where you entered so i took the, bu the bus from back there you can also take the train all the way in here to Vassadown. I'll link that in the description as well. So you can take the, the, the train all the way here, and then you can either take the cable car up to the place we're gonna go to in a bit, or you can walk in, or you can go that way and walk in the way I came from. 
So it's a better if you want, you know what you want to do, or you can stay where I stayed. I think it's called Vice Vice Bad, yeah, um, where you can take the bus up and then take the cable car up, like I did. On this side, it mostly looks like this all the way down. But once you get down, you meet these cool ladies. So we're just about to enter cow country. The lovely cows. I love cows. So look at those horns. They're huge. And what they do is they put these things around them just to make sure that they point up and not sideways so they don't hurt each other. But that makes them look even more scary, so. <laughs> so a friend of mine actually got um, hunted by, by some cows and had to run all the way out. And barely made it, so. As you can see, we're getting to the more tourist areas now, and that's why there are so many people. And it's very easy to get here. Tselpse, which we're gonna see soon, is beautiful, and it's located with centers in the background, behind a blue shimmering lake. This is where you have the most hittas and places to grab snacks and drinks. And there it is, Tselpse. Unfortunately, the clouds are covering centers, but let's see if we can get a glimpse later. At this point, I had to take a decision. Either I'll risk going up to Ebenalp, or I'll head directly to Meglisalp. Given the power of the thunderstorm coming in, I decided to rather be safe than sorry, because the path up here is not something you want to do when there's a thunderstorm, as you can see soon. One thing that hit me here was that the hike is very different in different areas and how you can get from a lush forest to a very bare mountain terrain in a very short period of time. So as you can see, it's starting to become a bit more sketchy walking up. But the view is really nice in the background though. You have this turquoise water, but it goes straight down. And that's the time when they start having these wires so you can just hold, hold on to, at least in these more touristy parts. So as I said, unfortunately, I don't think the weather is going to be good enough for me to go all the way over there to Esht. Uh, I'll put a link in the description, also a name on, on the uh, in the video. But so that area is one of the oldest mountain huts in Switzerland, and it was built 1860. Before that, it was used. You know, they I think they have old leftover from be bears. They have old leftovers from from people. So there are some. Um, what do you call those? Caves. You have some caves over there. And in those caves, people have lived for a very long time. But the mountain hut, as it looks today, was built 1860. Before that, on the top of the mountain there, there is a Wildkirche, which is, um, I don't know, wilderness church. And 1658, a priest called Ullmann was the first person to live there as a hermit. And he stayed there, I assume, until he died, because there's, I, I couldn't find any more information about it. It's totally worth going there. But unfortunately, I can't get there today. But the cool thing here, though, as you can see, is on the, this side here, you have the last mountain range, or that last um, uh, mountain um, ridge. And behind this, there is just, it goes straight down and then there's just a flat route on the other side. It's a very easy, enjoyable environment there, actually. So this is the last big mountain on this side. So you've seen everything. By seeing everything from this video, you've seen everything there is to see about this place. However, obviously, I haven't been on the other side there, so the views might be slightly different. But you see the same things from a different angle, but still the same thing. This part is such an enjoyable stroll, because you know you're there, and it's just a flat walk the whole way with no risk involved. 
finally here. It's five o'clock. Very nice to be here, <laughs> I'm a bit tired. So it became 24 kilometers and roughly 1,500 meters of ascent and descent. Fortunately enough, we didn't go all the way over there because otherwise it would have been a bit more, but I would have been in more in a hurry than I was a bit scared actually of the weather. So in here, they have the old hut. And that was the first hut that they built here. That was built 16, sorry, 1862. So that one over there, 1860, and this one, 1862. And it was might have been the first guest house, because that might have been transferred in, transformed into a guest house a bit later, later. Anyway, in 1897, they built the big house, and that's where we're hopefully staying today. That's where I stayed in the past, because they, they still use all of these houses. You can see there's there are plenty of houses around here. On the left side there, you also have a church that was built in 1903 was beginning so we're gonna stay there and hopefully it's gonna be a lovely day the fortunate thing here though is that they don't have cell phone reception so if you have you know girlfriend boyfriend husband wife that is very bad at putting away their phone well in here they can't do anything so it's a perfect retreat if you just want to trick people not to use their phones and I actually did that to my sister and she got very upset but uh, you know it's fine she liked it anyway got this Modesto lag and we're only three people here so hopefully not too many other people join. Downstairs you had toilet, you have a shower, you have the washing area where you leave your shoes and also on the top if you need additional blankets if it's really really cold. The fortunate thing here is everyone has three minutes to shower so if you're slow, well, like slow people, well, they just have to hurry up. So there's not, not a long queue, which is really actually nice. Hopefully these people don't snore. That's the only downside. But we'll see. But it's a cozy place. After showering and getting myself a bit freshened up, I went to have dinner. You can go here and get a three course half pension menu or order directly from the a la carte menu. Given there's not much more to do here and there's no cell phone reception, I just went and read a book. I went to bed when everyone else did as well. So breakfast here is included in the price if you stay the night. As you can see, it's a very simple breakfast. New day and it looks much better than forecasted. So I decided to take my chances and continue up. So today's a new day. It's 7, 7.30, 7.40. I woke up at seven to go and have breakfast. Behind us here, you see the whole valley and all the way out there to the left, that's where you have Echel. So what we're gonna try to do today is we're gonna try to go up to the, the top of the mountain over at Sentis. However, it looks a bit cloudy up there. So we'll see if I actually manage or otherwise on the top here. And this is a safe thing. There's a hut and on the other side there, you can just go straight down. It's a normal, sort of a normal road. So it's probably just a normal hiking route or like Vanderweg as they call it here, where there's no risk involved whatsoever. So up here, you see they have a lot of huts everywhere. You have a hut there, you have huts in there. We can continue walking towards Rothstein Pass. Sorry, my German is not that good. And uh, worst case, we'll, we'll go to Wildhaus and just take the car from the uh, bus from there. You can also here go down to Seelbsee in that area, that's where we came from. But you can also, you might be able to see it here, you can always go here, which takes you to where we were yesterday. So you go up 
over to Bolinvis, that's where I swam. You can also go over the mountains here, but that's a blue, white, blue. White, blue, white, I always do that incorrect. Um, so that's a bit more sketchy. All over here, there are routes connecting to each other. And there's a very good hiking map, which shows every path and the estimated time to finish it. I've linked this map in the description. Unfortunately, all the text is in German, but I mean, a map is a map. Over there. That's yesterday when I crossed the second mountain, when I went down to the, the uh, Sealpse, which you saw just a minute ago. This is the other route that you can come over, but that's white, blue, white, so that's, that's a bit more of a challenge. Another route that you can take up to Sentis is the route that you might be able to see here on the other side. So it goes from down there and then all the way up to Sentis, which is up there. You can't see it because of the clouds. And midway through over there, you have a hitta. So again, you have a hitta everywhere. You can probably stay there and obviously have lunch, have drinks, etc. Many people here just walk around and drink in every place. They might take their food with them and then do, they just get alcohol in every, every hut. So that's also a very <laughs> enjoyable experience. So I'm just gonna take you out here so that you can see what type of height we're on right now because <laughs> this is the advantage of having a camera on the stick. Now there is a bit of a climb, but the thing is, you're gonna see all these views on the way up, so it's kind of worth it. And we're slowly making our way up to the Hütte. I'm almost at the top. There, you see the house of the Hütte, where I'm probably not going to stay because you know staying in every Hütte just costs a lot of money because it's very expensive here. Behind me here, you see the whole valley. So this is the second valley. Yesterday you saw the first, the whole first valley. Today we see that whole second valley. So. I stayed down here in Megdesalp. You also have the lake here in the background. That's where I passed. The very greenish shimmery where you had cows and several hittis around it. Uh, that's the most tourist area here because it's very easy to get there. Behind here, over there, there are clouds unfortunately, but that's where Hochelkasten is, where I went up yesterday. So we walked all the way on the ridge there. Then we passed down, we passed down this ridge and then crossed and walked in to make this up there. Unfortunately, I'm not walking to Eche, Eche, whatever it's called. I can't pronounce it, I'm trying at least. So either you enter there and then you go in and you go out, or you go what I did on the other side and then you go out. The crossing I did, it's a bit too cumbersome to actually get too much value out of it, unless you want to do a two day hike as I did today. Otherwise what you can do is you go in in Echer, up there to Ebenalp, take the cable car from, from Weisbad, I think it's called, to uh, Wasserraum, I think it's called, up to uh, Ebenalp, look at the Wildkirche, go down to the Echer, which is this, uh, this hütte in the mountain, and then you hike down to Meglis, uh, to Seealpse, I see that that's probably one of the most famous lakes here, to be honest. Then you walk up to um, Megdesalp, where I stayed last night. You chill there, you stay there overnight. They have really nice rooms, actually. I stayed in a, in a bed or, or a dorm, but they do have fairly nice rooms. The only thing is that you don't have a shower or a bathroom in the room, which makes sense when it hit up here, right? So where we're going right now is we're gonna hike on the ridge here, or we'll see how far I go, because you see the, the clouds are coming in. I don't know if they're rain clouds or not. If there's rain clouds, I'm not gonna go there because we had thunder last night and we might have thunder today as well. Otherwise, I'm just gonna go for a little path or a little walk there, just to show you how it looks there. I anyway decided to go in and have a coffee for five Swiss francs. Oh, Grüezi, uh, könnte ich vielleicht einen Kaffee bekommen? Ein Kaffee? Ja, ja. Sehr gerne. Ja. Wo würden Sie sich hinziehen? Uh, The 
clouds are coming and going, as you can see. Currently, a second ago, it was cloudy, but now it opened up. So I'm gonna try to walk over here. I spoke to the people in the Hütte with my very broken German, because they don't speak any English whatsoever. And he said that it's very passable, should be no issues with snow, and they do have the chains to hold on to. So we'll see, <laughs> obviously they have a different view of this than I do. I'm just gonna show you here because I don't know how much I dare show later, but behind me here, it goes fairly far down, straight down. Sorry, I wanna see where I'm stepping here. Then, doing this very slowly, <laughs> here you can see you have these wires and you're holding on to the wire and then it just goes straight down. This really is the perfect hiking area for beginners. As long as you stay on the path, you'll get to see such incredible places. Since this is not just one hike, and you can walk around as it suits you, it's very hard to rate anything else than the overall experience. This area offers everything that you can want from going to the mountains, so it's an easy 10 out of 10. As long as you get up on the mountainside as I do, because if you go in the valley, it's still incredible, but you're not going to have the same views as you get from up here. In the background, there, you can see the safe route going down on the other side. And from there, when you get all the way down, you can take a bus. And sooner rather than later, the worst path starts. And it just gets worse and worse. This video took a lot of effort to make, so please consider subscribing. It lets me know that this effort is actually worth something, and that it helps you guys out. Currently in the clouds, Behind me here is a typical example of what we have to pass here. So on the other side, it's kind of the top of the mountain ridge, as you see there. Then here, you just go, and it goes straight down. Unfortunately, the clouds don't really show it to you. But as you can see, you should hold on to this wire the whole time, if you don't want to fall. And I haven't heard about that many accidents here. But still, nevertheless, to be safe, <clears throat> you should hold on to it. Being afraid of heights don't make this much easier. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a pain. You can probably see on the route that it's not the most comfortable route, but once we pass this and a bit more, there is a place which is kind of safe because on each side of it, you would have a mountain side, I mean, whatever, a bit of, of um, rocks. So you kind of feel safe in, in between because you're wedged in the middle. But until then, I'm going to try to hold on to these wires and it's really hard to film. So I stop right here just to show you this. Good see. So, sorry, uh, speak English, English. Ah, yeah. Do you speak English? Yeah, yeah only English. Or, oh, only English. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's a bit sketchy. It's, uh, it's okay. Yeah. Easy on. And uh, Have you come from that side? No, no, no. I come from... Uh, oh, okay. The... Well, then you've done the worst. <laughs> yes? Yeah, this is just easier uh, oh, part. Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, yeah, because... Uh, <laughs> this, this is... Uh, this sucks. A little bit... Uh, yeah. yeah. This, uh, this is the worst part. The worst uh, part, yes. Time to walk again. And this is how it is for a while. And as you can see, in some areas, you're fortunate enough to have wires on both sides. As you can see on the video, <laughs> that's pretty bad. So here on the side, straight down, and here 
go straight down as well. But I'm currently wedged in the middle between mounts on each side. So this is a very pretty place. Like it's, it's incredibly pretty, right? And as long as you take it slow and steady, don't stress and don't meet people. Because the thing is, last time I was here, it was a beautiful summer day. And there were so, I mean, hundreds of people going back and forth. And what you just saw, that's when they pass each other. Like, they're like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna pass you here. It's like, no, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Don't do it. I don't know if you can see, but there's a guy walking there, the guy that just passed down here. And you're just walking on this path here. I mean, if you can see the path, because it's almost invisible. It's right there. So I might not be able to film this as good because I'm scared shitless, to be honest. <laughs> Fortunately enough, there's no one else here, but I'll give you a bit more of a top down view here. Look at this. There you go. So I'm gonna try to head over to Sentis, which is all the way over there. So people don't do this at home. I will break this down and mix it with some music because to be honest, I'm very proud of actually doing this myself and I hope you enjoy watching the video. So I stopped here in the middle, just because I feel kind of safe here. It's a sturdy ground, something to hold on to. No one's passing me or anything. And you can see just how much of an angle you have here. And you might be able to see here actually, how far down it is, down all the way there, even though there's fog. And it just, it just continues like this. So I'm just gonna continue. What you see here is when I'm more comfortable, I use one hand, and when I'm less comfortable, I use two. So unfortunately, the most scary areas, you have the worst view. So now it cleared up a little bit, so you can see the whole valley down there. And all the way down there, that's Megasalp. That's where we came from originally. So we're just going to continue up to Sentis. There's a bit of snow, so I have to take my, my sticks out. I wouldn't recommend people to walk on this, actually. I was told that there were no snow, so I'm a bit pissed, but I have to get over there. There's no real other option. And up there, you'll see a lot of ebex. If it would have been a sunny day, or if I would have been slightly quicker, I would have seen so many ebex, because they were all out here behind me. And then they crossed and walked up there. So, but you can't get everything, so. This was probably the worst part for me, because I had an accident a few years ago when I started sliding down a mountain like this. But I made it safely this time. Make sure you have the right gear if you're going to do this.
How fortunate was that? Ooh, you can see centers in the background. The top, the mast. And that's where we're getting to in a bit. Behind me here, you have a beautiful view of the valley on the other side. It's gonna hold it different. There we go. So you have the whole valley behind here. And that's where you could also go down if you want. All I want to do now is to show people how sketchy snow can be because you have this layer where most people have been walking, right? But you can fall through. Fortunately, because you know, it, it might just be a top layer underneath, it might be totally empty. And here it's not much of a drop, but you know, sometimes the ice crevices on, on, on uh, glaciers can be huge, right? But also when you hike here, if you have a stream or something below, it will have cleaned everything below. That's how one of my friends got injured a few years ago. He hurt his back. So be very careful when you hike on snow. In the back right now, you have the whole of Vincent. Because the sun just allowed us to see it. Third valley is over there. Well, the last valley, I don't know if it's the third. And you can see the spire up there, which I'm heading to. This last part is fairly straightforward, and I was fortunate enough that I actually cleared up. I know this looks a bit scary as well, but honestly, it's much wider and feels a lot safer than the thing I just did. It went rather well to be honest, but the thing is, I don't know what I would have done if I met people on this path. You can see so much stuff from up here, but I'll tell you more about that in a second, because first I'm gonna have lunch. This cost 20 Swiss francs, and it's basically a soup with sausage, cheese, bread, and then a beer on the side. So the hitta you have here behind me, if you go here, you're gonna see all the way Germany over over to Germany with the black forest and everything. Then you're gonna have France. You're gonna have Italy. And then you're gonna have Liechtenstein and Austria over here. So you can see all the countries around here. So it gives an incredible view over the whole of Switzerland and also neighboring countries. And a bit of fun fact and history here. So, one thing that people don't know about this place is, because no one told me in the past, 1922, there were actually a murder here that was never solved. It's called the Sentis murder. And the Sentis murder was uh, the, the met, I don't know what's called in English, the people taking care of the weather, checking the weather. They were killed in February, and they were the shoemaker that they thought made it because three weeks after he committed suicide but it was never solved so they have an unsolved mystery down here and they only figured this out because the guy stopped reporting the weather even though it's only 2500 meters the topographic prominence at 2000 meters is what makes it stand out so much And at this point, I decided to go home. So I went down to the cable car, which is on the bottom floor. A one-way ticket here costs 32 Swiss francs, while if you want a round trip, it's gonna be 46. If you're gonna do a lot of these here in Switzerland, they have something called half fare. So if you're gonna spend a lot of money on public transport, you can get 50% off if you get this card. I think this card costs 190 Swiss francs, but the thing is, if you go up to, for example, Jungfrau, that costs 200 Swiss francs and you get 50% off. If you add all these expenses together, it can add up very quickly.
I heard something outside, so I made my way out there quickly. And with this concert, there's not much more to share. I really hope this helps people. If you made it this far in this video, please consider subscribing. It means a ton to me. Thank you very much and goodbye.